You're in the right place if you want to learn what it's like moving to Vancouver with pets. What are the things you need to look out for? What do you need to worry about? And how are you going to live with them in Vancouver? It turns out that our furry little buddies actually make our lives a little complicated. Uh, but that's okay because we love them and they love us. Towards the end of this video, I'm going to get into the exact details about what it's like finding a place to live in Vancouver, whether you're buying or renting, but you're going to need to stay tuned to the very end to understand how to navigate our real estate market with pets. It's tricky. Here we go. All right, so first and foremost, what you're going to want to do is check the municipal bylaws for the city that you're moving to. Now, of course, this is about Vancouver, so obviously you want to double check that if you're moving to the city of Vancouver. But if you happen to be moving to one of the dozens of municipalities that surround Vancouver, their suburbs, whether it's the village of Anmore or Quitlam or Port Moody, they may all have slightly different bylaws in terms of pets. And you want to understand what the rules are before you move. And so there may be a pet that's allowed in Anmore that might not be allowed in Coquitlam as an example. And if you have a dog, that's probably the most obvious one that requires licensing. And you don't want to run afoul of the local municipal bylaw enforcement officers and rack up a whole bunch of bylaw fines. They do enforce the bylaw for dog licenses. I know in the city of Vancouver pretty vigilantly. So you'll see them actively enforcing that by law at uh, city parks, at the, at the beach, as an example, and at the off-leash dog parks. So be sure to get a dog license and double check the bylaws in the city that you're moving to. Now, the other thing to understand is that there's off-leash areas and there's leashed areas. The general consensus in all of the municipalities, if you have a pet outside, it needs to be on a leash, it needs to be controlled. And, you know, most often that's going to be a dog, but, you know, I have seen the odd cat, which I don't know why that's weird, but it feels kind of weird to take a cat on a, on a walk. Apparently some of them like it, but uh, as in terms of dogs, most of the urban areas are going to require that you have them on leash. And the city of Vancouver though, does have a really phenomenal network of off leash dog parks. There's 37 of them in the city of Vancouver. So they can be the entire park. They can be an area in a park. That's a little more common downtown where they have fenced off zones for the dogs to play in. And then there's a couple beaches. Like there's an area uh, just east of Kitsilano, uh, Kits Beach, uh, that's an off leash dog park. And then an area in Spanish Banks, that's also an off leash dog park. So lots of opportunities for you to get out with your dogs. Just make sure you're following the rules, whether it's off leash or on leash. And then of course, there's the great outdoors. As if you've been following my videos, you know how close everything is whether you want to go to a specific spirit park, uh, the UBC Endowment Lands, um, Burnaby Mountain, or the North Shore, uh, the trail network on the North Shore, there's lots of opportunities to get out into nature, but the expectation is generally that your dog is going to be on a leash. There's plenty of people who let them go off leash, of course, but there's always a little, uh, a little battle between different community members about whether the dogs should be on leash or not on leash. But the general expectation is, unless it's an off-leash area designated that you should have uh, your dog on leash. Oh, and also that you're picking up after your dog. That's the other expectation. So unlike some areas, I think uh, Paris, as an example, is sort of known as a city where dog remnants are left on the street. Uh, it's definitely sort of uh, common in the city of Vancouver and its surroundings that people are picking up after their dogs um, and carrying little baggies with them and disposing of that afterwards. Now, Vancouver really is a very dog friendly city. You see dogs everywhere and especially downtown, Yale town. I mean, there's people that take them in backpacks. They have them in strollers. They treat them, frankly, as a member of their family, as a child that doesn't really grow up and there's tons of places to be able to pamper your dogs and inordinate amounts of money on your dog if that's what you would like to do and cats incidentally there's also a, a bunny cafe and a cat cafe so people really do love animals in the city of vancouver and love pets many of the businesses won't allow dogs inside though and i think that's generally a health regulation so you're not going to be able to take your dog or your cat uh, or hamster or whatever into a restaurant most of the time uh, or into a grocery store as an example so most of the time you're going to be needing to leave those animals outside but there are some specific businesses that are especially dog friendly and it's becoming far more common i 
personally I haven't had a dog I think it's been five years now since my last dog died back then there was nowhere you could go uh, today actually there are some patios as an example that are dog friendly so there are food establishments where you can go out and rather than having a tire dog outside of the business you can bring the dog inside and that has become a little more of a thing so specifically the three places that I know of are Mahoney and Sons, uh, Marina Side, and Local. So some really nice patios that allow you to relax with your dog on the patio, which I think is fantastic. And then the other thing that a lot of businesses, you go down any main street, a number of businesses will have little dishes outside filled with water, and that's not for you, that's, that's for your dog. Uh, so especially when it gets hot, obviously dogs uh, would like a little drink of water if they can get it. And then another cool thing that you'll see around the city is uh, water fountains that are generally human use. They'll have a higher one that's for an adult, a little bit lower for the kids, and then a very low one down pooch level, uh, which I think is also pretty cool. So the city does want to open its arms to people with pets and uh, there are some pretty cool little conveniences for, for those little pooches. Real quick, I put a lot of time and effort into these videos and I hope you like them. A little way that you can pay me back is by hitting that like button, subscribe or commenting down below. Really appreciate any of that. It makes me feel better about myself and all the work that I put into these. Now back to the video. But it's also not all rosy for our little furry friends. There are some dangers in the city and even though we are a really urban environment, we are incredibly close to wilderness, as you probably know if you've been watching these videos. But also there's there's certain animals, certain wild animals that have taken to the urban environment and they can be a danger to your pets, whether that is a dog on leash, off leash, or a cat, or I don't know, chickens that you have in the backyard, which incidentally the city of Vancouver does allow up to four in your backyard but we do have some animals that you need to be worried about perhaps one of the less violent but more annoying ones uh, is a skunk and if you've never been skunked or never had an animal that's been skunked it's pretty disgusting and it's really hard to get rid of a bath in tomato juice generally does the trick um, and they don't seem to learn which is the other weird thing about um, our furry friends they they just keep going after those skunks even though they keep getting skunked and then raccoons raccoons are incredibly cute but they are very vicious and very mean they have really sharp little claws and uh, sharp teeth and they defend themselves and defend their young so uh, be cautious around raccoons coyotes are another one and they will hunt animals whether that's uh, your outdoor cat or your dog that's off leash in at UBC Endowment Lands, at Stanley Park, at uh, Trout Lake, and at the City Cemetery. Those are all areas that are known for coyotes. And uh, I've actually seen them hunt dogs. Um, and also incidentally, just go out after small children. They, they have absolutely no fear. Another animal that you gotta be looking out for are bald eagles. Um, there are a number that live in the city and they go after, you know, the smaller, easier prey. So if you have rabbits in the backyard or hamsters or something like that, or just a really little dog um, and some cats, they, they can get hunted by the bald eagles. And then lastly would be bears. And uh, yes, we do have bears and not so much in the city of Vancouver, but any of the the suburbs of Vancouver that are on the North Shore, uh, underneath the mountains essentially. So whether that is West Vancouver, North Vancouver, Port Moody, Coquitlam, those are the cities on the North Shore that are generally more prone to bears and not so much grizzly bears, although those can be present, but more black bears. If they're hungry, they can be going after small animals uh, or if they get separated from their young and, and there's an animal in between them, they may want feel that they need to defend their young. So you do have to be cautious of bears. And I mean, the other thing is not just living on the North Shore, but also if you're hiking, walking the trail, it's something that you just need to be aware of. The way to counter it would be to put a little bell on your dog so that the animals know that they're there and they're not gonna be surprised and that generally they will stay away as a result. And finally, housing. How does having a pet impact housing? Unfortunately, the answer is it's negative. 
um, it makes it a lot harder to secure housing, whether you're renting or buying. And so let's cover rent first. The thing with having a pet for a landlord is that it increases the wear and tear on the property. And that is generally what they're gonna be most concerned about. And so many landlords are reluctant to rent to tenants, even if they're not reluctant to, um, or even if they don't have a, a sort of a, a guideline against having pets, if they're renting at an attractive price point in such a tight rental market, they have such a huge number of potential renters that they can rent to that they don't need to rent to somebody with pets. Um, so the result is that you can find places that will accept pets, but because there's more wear and tear and because the lower price places are going to get rented so easily, you often have to pay a bit of a premium, unfortunately, to be able to rent uh, a place when you have pets. The other thing to note is that the Landlord Tenancy Act uh, allows the landlord to take another half month pet deposit. So on top of the regular damage deposit, which is a half month rent, um, they can require you to pay a half month pet deposit. And that just basically pays for any of the wear and tear that might happen in the property uh, as a result of allowing a pet. And finally, just a tip about finding a place with the pet that you're gonna rent. Do not keep it secret. Uh, your landlord's gonna find out, you know, your dog's gonna bark, they're gonna see the cat in the window, whatever it happens to be. So just be upfront with it. Um, and I would humanize it. So don't just say, yeah, I have a dog and it's a miniature schnauzer or something like that. Send in a picture, send in a little cover letter with your application. And I think this is maybe the best tip of all is give references for your pet. So. You know, whether that's from uh, your old landlord or your vet or the doggy daycare, uh, add in some references for your pet that give some assurance to the landlord that your pet is well behaved and it isn't gonna be a nuisance. And that's a real key in our market that is where it's so difficult to find a place uh, to rent in particular if you have a pet. On another note, I am a real estate agent. I've been selling real estate in Vancouver for the last 15 years. And over that time, I've helped hundreds of families move to the city of Vancouver. If you're thinking of moving to Vancouver too, reach out to me below at the contact details right there on the screen anytime we can get that ball rolling on your move to Vancouver. Now let's get back to the video. And then what about owning? There's different types of ownership, of course, different types of properties. And where you're gonna have the most freedom if you own pets is if you own your own house, mainly because you're the sole owner and nobody can tell you any different. Nobody that is except for the municipality that you live in. So you do have to follow the municipal guidelines. And what they're worried about is safety to the public, uh, nuisance of the animal, also just the whether an animal is being neglected or not. So, so long as all three of those things are, are sort of above board, then you don't really have anything to worry about. But if you can't or don't want to purchase a house and you're buying in a strata, there's a whole other level that you have to worry about and that's your strata. And what are the bylaws of the strata? they can enforce what you're allowed to do with the property. And pet bylaws are incredibly common. And a lot of people get really frustrated or find uh, they have a hard time in, in finding a property that allows them to have pets. And so most stratas in BC will restrict the number of pets to two. They would generally not allow any exotic animals, which isn't really unusual. No giraffes, no rhinoceroses, rhinoceri, rhinoceroses. Um, but you can have two dogs and or two cats or a mixture of the two. Um, now, many individual stratas, though, will change those bylaws and especially older stratas will have restrictions when it comes to the number of cats. Uh, that could be one. So they may only allow one and not two, definitely not three. Um, and they most commonly restrict the size and the breed of dogs. So many stratas feel in the past felt like Big dogs weren't something that they wanted, but they would allow little dogs. I'm not saying it's logical. I'm just saying that it's out there. And then the other thing is uh, the breed of dogs. So uh, vicious breed is a very common restriction. Um, pit bulls would be a common dog that is not allowed in a lot of stratas. Um, but that's something to be aware of when you're looking for a place to purchase. And you wanna play, pay very close attention to what the strata bylaws are before you purchase if you have a pet and do not think that you can get around it. Um, somebody's gonna find out, uh, even if it's a cat, which is probably one that could fly under the radar more than most, 
Obviously a dog needs to come outside regularly to relieve itself. You could get away with a cat inside, but one thing that I remind clients about when this comes up is, well, what happens if your cat is sitting in the window behind the curtain? They love to stare out the window and your neighbors see that you have a cat in a building that doesn't allow any pets. Um, there's gonna be a very consistent bylaw fine every month until unfortunately you either move or get rid of the animal. So um, unfortunately, pets do pose some problems when it comes to finding a home in Vancouver, whether it's buying or renting. Well, it turns out that moving to Vancouver with pets is actually kind of complicated and it does impact your ability to secure a home in Vancouver. I hope you found this video really useful. And if you did, uh, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. I'm also a, a real estate agent in Vancouver. I've worked with hundreds of families just like yours moving to the city of Vancouver. I'd love to help you uh, reach out anytime. My contact information is right there on the screen. We can get that ball rolling, have a conversation and take it from there. I do have tons of videos about moving to Vancouver. Be sure to check them out. There is one right there about buying a house in Vancouver. And if houses aren't for you, then there's a, another video about buying a condo in Vancouver. Be sure to check those out. And I'm gonna be right back here next week. I uh, put out a new video about moving and living in Vancouver every single week. I'll see you then.